Welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 53. You can find me online everywhere as Kralalin. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Ravelry, everywhere. I have a web shop which is kralalin.etsy.com or colorfulcreativity.nl. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast. It is in the Ravelry <laughs> group section and it's called the Colorful Creativity Group. And there's a blog with no show notes. <laughs> I've been way too busy to write up the show notes the last two times and I'm guessing since no one asked for show notes that you know where to find me and you know where to ask me questions if you have any and that I will skip the show notes from now on and I might even retire my blog because well blogging is just not my thing. Um, yeah it's been a while. I told you I was going on vacation and I might record an episode during my vacation. That didn't happen. Um, Robert and I went to Schiermonnik Oog. We had a lovely few days on the island, biking, walking. Even though the weather was not perfect, we really enjoyed it. We had some sun and when it was raining we went inside. Somehow, rain was always happening on nap time for me, so perfect. Um, just one evening we had a lot of rain and we didn't want to go out for dinner because we just didn't feel up to it. And yeah, we just stayed in the apartment where we were. We took our sandwiches and we ate those. And we played games, which we haven't done in a very long time and we really enjoyed that. Um, as we got home, I got sick. I got a throat infection. I didn't have a voice. Um, yeah, not an option to record a podcast. What can you do? So in a week after, everything was fine again, but I just was very busy. I thought I can record a podcast then or then. Nope, didn't happen. Um, and this week, well... The whole world got turned upside down because Robert is in the hospital. And I was like, okay, I already got some messages. Oh, Colleen, where are you? I'm missing your podcast. How, how are you doing? Are you well, etc. Yeah, well, I'm doing okay now, but Robert is in the hospital. He has got some kind of infection, um, inflammation. We don't know what. He's been there since Tuesday. Today is Sunday. Totally not my usual recording day, as you know. But I thought, well, he's got visitors now. I've got some time for myself. I can do whatever I want and I want to record something. So I'm hoping to keep this a shorter episode because that means I don't have to edit that much. Um, yeah, he's in hospital. They don't know what it is or how it started. I only know that he woke up with a fever and within two hours that fever was over 40 degrees Celsius. By that time we were already in the hospital. We went to the um, doctor's uh, office that does the night shifts um, very early in the morning, uh, 7 o'clock. Normally 8 o'clock your own doctor office opens but we didn't want to wait that long because his fever was just running very high very quickly and if you call your doctor at eight o'clock you are not there yet so I thought well if we can go to that doctor's office uh, the emergency one very early in the morning he's already there and they can just push him one door further for the ER which they did so he had to stay antibiotics on an IV and fluids, etc. It works. He was doing very well with that, and then he developed some kind of red spots on his already bad leg. Um, for those of you, of you who don't know, he um, he has had cancer uh, on his back, uh, skin cancer. Um, with some uh, uh, with a removal of his lymph nodes from his uh, groin well somewhere there uh, from his right leg and uh, you can see how well prepared I am today 
Um, <clears throat> which means that if anything happens at that leg, there's no defense mechanism. And he has to be hospitalized immediately and needs antibiotics. Well, that case happened. Nothing to do, just sit it out. We don't know how it started, where it started, why it started, what started it. Um, all the questions are there. They just know to treat it with antibiotics. And yeah, he's responding very well now. The red spots are a sign that there was an extra inflammation and they're treating it like as on my lap. Where's the missus? They're really cuddly now with me because there's no one else. They're missing their daddy. Well, we don't know when he's coming home yet. We hope this week somewhere in the middle, maybe. Um, no news on that part. Just like they're still looking for what caused it. You see, that's not yours. Yeah, what do you want? Okay. So yes, that was the quick and very messy update on why it took me so long to record. And I will just dive in to what I did. I have to admit, I didn't do very much. Um, I know I forgot a project, maybe even two. But you just came from your missus. She just probably used the kit, the, 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 the litter box. I'm a bit dirty now. So on vacation, it was actually pretty cold. I took I took four or five projects with me. I have a photo on Instagram. Like I said, I'm well prepared. Not. I just thought I'd hop on. I finished my fall in love mittens. The pattern from Herbstblatt Regina. Um, I finished these on Schiermen Koch. I actually took them with me everywhere. I was like, I should take a project. And if I have to sit it out because it started raining, I just have a project. And yes, this yarn is this bright. I guess that's good while well, biking in the dark or something. <laughs> I can just stick my hand out, like I have to go to the left or to the right and they will see my hand. <laughs> um, I took it everywhere with me. Uh, one night we went to a restaurant, I uh, the first night, and I was able to knit like a lot. Just between courses and waiting and having a lovely time with my husband. And yeah. It was a good thing I finished them. I think I finished them on the second evening. Maybe the third morning or something. It was cold. <laughs> it was like 12 degrees on the bike. And even though 12 degrees is not really cold. It does feel cold on your hands when it's that cool yeah cool wind from the ocean and rainy and, and chilly so it was very nice to have these I was very happy and yeah what can I tell you about them I love the pattern I totally would knit them again but a few stitches extra because they are really tight for me Robert doesn't even get his hand like further than this for me they fit like a, a real glove and the only thing is that my thumb is a bit tight but I hope it will stretch out. They have been worn already multiple times because the weather has turned to autumn and it's nice to have a bit extra warmth on your hands. Really lovely knit. I do not know why it took me so long because I started with that cuff and I had it ready to go and then it was maybe three hours that I knit if you count it all and I finished the other one so but they're finished I'm happy another thing I'm really happy about that I finished them is somewhere down here I just threw everything I needed on that thing next to me and they are actually inside out, but these are the humongous socks. Yay! 
I still have to weave in ants, but last night it was a bit dark and I did have a light on, but that wasn't enough to see these two and for weaving in ants. The other ants are already all gone. So here is the sock. I was literally, literally <laughs> done with these yesterday. I was trying to knit the cuff about as long as the toe and I was like, no, I'm done now. I have maybe five gram left, which would be enough to knit that part, but I was like, no, it's long enough. I was wearing a pair of socks with a longer cuff yesterday because my mom knit them and I was like, I don't like that. Maybe other people don't like it either if they are too high because it starts going down because my calves are quite big from swimming and yeah I'm like okay so these are done these are done in GB uh I think it's print not even sure but it's a uh, self patterning and the heel is a contrast fish lips kiss heel I really hope they will fit him and they will not be too big because he didn't have that wide of feet. If I had to do it again, I would have cast on 68 instead of 72 stitches, but this is EU size 46, 47. So about, length was about, what was it? 29 centimeters. My inches are leaving me. Was it 12, size 12? I think so. Uh, it's big really big but they're done just four more ends to weave in and they can go actually probably they are visiting Robert now so well they have to wait if we had done it the other way around me going in the morning them going in the afternoon I would have dropped those socks off at Robert and they could have taken them next on projects I can tell you already I frogged the mystery knit along what fade because that knit along for me was really a what the fuck. Um, two clues of brioche, three clues of just garter, and then an I-cord bind off and some tassels as a bonus. I'm sorry. The last two things I already predicted. So, no. Just no. There was no mystery in that. So I ripped it and I cast on something else. I was like... Okay, then now it's time to cast on a find your g-string or your well it's already too big for g-string would be a really big person then well, find your uterus we know it all all the funny jokes so find your fade and I am already at the second color and the second part of lace it hasn't grown a lot well, maybe I even showed it to you last time. I don't remember because there's a marker in here, but I don't think I did. Well, at least here it is. <laughs> and the first colorway is by Herbst Rekina and it is the mint to be colorway. I am now knitting with my own hand dyed and I didn't even name it, I just dyed something in between and I found a knot in this skein. I know knots do happen also in expensive hand dyed. Yeah, yarn doesn't come in kilometers of length all the time and they have to attach the next one. I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna cut it out and then just weave in extra ends because I am on the side or that I'm just gonna knit it and it is a very good knot. I really can't move it, but I think I will just weave in the ends. That's why I didn't continue because I found it out late at night and was like, do not take any rash decisions. So, second color is my own. Third color is Undercover Otter, green, green, quickly, quickly green, well, one of those. So going on to that, next one is going to be 
craftsfulness bullet journal. Then the yarn is not caked yet because, well, why should it? A hand dyed by me, also a, I think it, I called it purple fade and mint fade or, or green fade or whatever. So this one. Um, oh wait, this is easier to see like this. Then I will fade into Heimat Wolle and that will fade into Undercover Otter again. It is a Plum Igor. So I think it will be this. Maybe it will be this. I have to see how it turns out when I am there. I just have to find how this one matches. I think this one matches best with that one. And then it will go dark and in the end it will be the plum. So yes, it's a lot of yarn. And what I didn't tell you, because it's actually a new acquisition, it is in a Jibby Roo Star Wars Halloween bag. I fell in love instantly and I had to order it. I saw it at a friend's Instagram and I was like, click, click, mine. <laughs> so her tag is inside Jibby Roo Sue's. I really, really love that bag. And it holds so much yarn. I can put in all skeins, those three extra. And then it is really, really full, but still it fits. So I was like, well, I will kick up four and I will see how far I get on vacation. Not that far as I wanted, but hey. Also took this one with me on vacation, Jibby Roos project bag for Halloween for la from last year, which is quite a bit smaller. And in here I have Drops Merino Extra Fine. So maybe you already know that I also have in here the little baby cardigan I got back to make longer. For this, I had to knit a whole lot of ribbing about 10 to 12 centimeters and it, that is what it is here I just have to find a way to attach this so it will be on the bottom of the cardigan and yes this really should be enough for this part I'm thinking about kitchenering but I have no clue how to kitchener the pearls so I have to look that up it's gonna be a hell of a job and I for sure will never say that I will make it bigger again because that means I have to do a lot of stupid things that you shouldn't do with a nice cardigan. So I ripped out one side of the button band, this side. The buttons were sewn on really, really well, so I had to cut it off. Um, it, 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 it hurts when you have to cut your knitting in this case. Um, I forgot that I did the neckline after the button band, so those stitches are on stitch markers. These very handy light bulb thingies. I decided not to get this one off also. I will just attach the ribbing on the bottom and then make another little part of ribbing of this with one buttonhole to attach to that part. Maybe two buttonholes, I have to see. <clears throat> and then Kitchener it or some kind of sewn thingy. And after that I have to reattach this, yeah, just pick up the stitches again and remake this button band and pick up stitches from the side to fix it, it somehow. So yeah, my mind was not into this yet. I'm like, whoa, overwhelmed. I'm getting into a rhythm with visiting Rubberd and handling my own life. So maybe there's some room for it. Because yesterday I finally finished these socks. I maybe knit one half row per day the last week. Totally no knitting time. 
which is a shame because I have another new project. Like I said, I already frogged the WTF to cast on something else. And this is a matchy matchy bag with the project. Keep on knitting, kitten. If you think what she's doing weird, I have a Laia here and a Binx here. Like, what? They just dropped on my lap and just sitting down. I'm getting some stuff out. And I have to warn you now because this is a big spoiler. Let's get to the front page. I am knitting the Speckle and Pop by Stephen West. This is the West Knits Mystery Shawl Knit Along 2017. I'm still at Gil 1 because I'm a real big slowpoke. But that's fine. I'm enjoying it. And I'm using yarn I had in my WTF. This is my own hand dyed Shirley Temple. This is my own hand dyed Sangria. And then we're fading into Trelise's Mandala. I really, really like this idea. From light to medium to dark. Just like it says in the pattern. And then we add some pops. Yes, I will show you what I'm, where I am now, but you have to add five pops. So I had a set of Devonson yarns, the Color Lover set. Yes, Leia, you are in my way. I will shove you around. This is the Color Lover set by Devonson yarns, and I am uh, using singles for the main colors and this is a sock yarn also my smooth sock it's, it's the same as my smooth sock so it's really nice as the pops i was like okay i'm gonna make spaces i didn't want to start the pattern because of the letdown of the what the fuck and the uh, the building blocks was not my thing i was like i'm gonna watch the first spoilers first I was immediately totally blown away. I was like, I'm gonna knit this. So I got the pattern and I started. And here is the front. This is my progress. I don't even have a full repeat yet, but that's fine. Yeah, I have to do one more for a full repeat. I really, really love knitting it. It's so much fun and learning new stitch techniques with the things you already know, but doing it a little bit different. It's just awesome. And I want to end with a yellow. So I calculated I have to add two colors. And this is my radioactive nuclear extra bright yellow green, like the highlighter colorway so I had this one and I was like oh I could add that one too it will be nice and then this is the extra bright orange because I was missing orange in it and this is what I knit the fall in love mittens with and this is a totally different base again than the rest I'm like, uh oh I'm mixing base but for the pops I really really like it I might even go crazy somewhere and add some more hair or some kid soap. Yeah, well, crazy me. This is knit on higher, higher sharps, three and a half millimeter. Standard size for Stephen West. I'm really, really loving this. And I'm very happy those socks are finished because, well, I can now knit without feeling the pressure of having to finish those darn damn long extra large socks. And I can now just knit on this one or some other socks because it's October already. So it's Socktober everywhere and well, I have a new project bag which is watching me and I haven't gotten out to show you because I have so many things I want to show you I was like I'm gonna split it up hopefully do a short one and then do one uh, next week again and the cats are really making themselves comfortable on my lap 
which is not handy because I want to show you stuff. I'm going to show you some shop things first. The Colorful Sock Club Month 2 came out. And I, of course, totally forgot to show everyone. So here is it. This is the colorway, nice and purple, with a matching <coughs> mini. And here is a stitch marker that is also matching. Color not really showing, but it's really dark purple with a little bit of brownish and, and warm Cabernet wine or Merlot wine, whatever wine you want, colors. So yeah, that was the colorway for the second installment. <clears throat> then I have a Halloween kit in the shop. And that kit consists of this awesome project bag. It is still pre-order because I haven't had time to make the bags ready. I only had time to make one. So this is it. Then there's the yarn. I am calling it Hippie Halloween because I'm not the spooky, scary Halloween kind of gal. I want it colorful and bright. so. This way I am making it colorful and bright. Then you will get a lot of stitch markers. Like this beautiful cauldron. Handmade glass. There are better photos in my Etsy shop. Then there's this bloodshot eyeball. And there's one other glass stitch marker but that is a secret that will be a surprise to the ones who order the kit and after that I will add it to the shop but there's more stitch markers there's a kid crying outside and the cats are like what so I can finally hop forward and show you so I have this spider web then there is this witch's hat there is the arched back cat. Let me put aside. There is the pumpkin. So all in all, there will be 10 stitch markers accompanying this set. Which on a broom and jack o' lantern and a pumpkin carriage isn't it cute the last one so that will be my halloween kit for this year uh there's also trick or treat well treats of course there's gonna be a full bag of haribo vampires and some nimtzwei uh, milk uh, ghosts and they have a uh, fruit flavor like apple cherry lemon uh, orange and some other ones so that will also go with the whole kit i only have two more available so if you want one don't wait too long and with that i'm gonna treat you to my acquisitions this one came in, the Kickstarter from Woods I joined a long, long time ago, I have to admit. I got the book in, put it aside and haven't had time to look at it. But from what I did like this, it looks really, really beautiful. I have not seen a pattern yet. I'm like, oh, I must knit that. But it's also their choice of wool. They are really into the natural wooly, wooly wool. And I'm not. So I will just have to see, though I do really like the looks of the, the cable sweater that's in here. I still have to take some time and then sit with it and look at it. And I'm trying to find some... I do like these things. 
photos with a cup of tea and stuff. So, yeah. It's really pretty and I'm happy I could help with the Kickstarter. Next, I'm going to show you the yarn I have here and then I have another story. And this will make it a longer episode even though I wanted it short. Two cakes of Durable Colorful Yarn and this is the Colorful Glam. It has a sparkle and I couldn't resist when I saw this. It's not plied, so it's the same as the Unicut yarn, which is perfectly okay with me. I have no clue what to make with it yet, but I just had to have it. You know those yarns you just had to have. It happens. And then I have because at the beginning of my vacation, the first Sunday, it was time for Das Bunte Schaf in Germany. Oh my God, I had a blast there. It was so, so nice meeting some friends I already made with Instagram and met up in person also. Uh, also meeting some new people and meeting some people I only met online like Regina from Herbst Bad Regina. I, I met her in person and oh my god, see, she, she is so, so sweet and kind. And well, I did not leave empty-handed. I got myself two skeins of Regina's yarn in her hazel soft sock, which is exactly the same base as my soft sock, so I can combine it. And this is untypical fall colors, and this is the crazy flower bed. It's so nice and soft. And it smells like yarn. Yay. So yeah, I really love that yarn. And I really love meeting Regina in person for the first time. Then I got something else. Um, first, I want to show you this one. This cute little project bag. Oh, I love Regenbogenwolle, so rainbow yarn. Uh, the shop is called Regenbogenwolle. And kiss me at the rainbow. I really love it. And of course, I had to get a second one because I also took one for Petra from Undercover Other. She couldn't come. But next year, we're gonna go together. We already decided on that. Then I also got some stuff, uh, some more stuff at the Regenbogen Wolle. I got this beautiful, oh, let me see, boot stag, Kent Romney um, with uh, milk silk, so um, fake silk and rami. And this could be used for socks because it has a reinforced stuff that, that simulates nylon. And I really, really loved it. So I just had to take it. <clears throat> the third shop I bought stuff is Fräulein Riechwein. So Mrs. Smells Nice. Well, it smells like yarn. <laughs> and there I bought this beautiful skein. And it is a 50% wool, 25% cotton, and 25% polyamide. Um, this is her merino cotton blend. I think it's a schoppel from the Zauberbal uh, base. I've seen it a lot there, and I haven't seen it anywhere else yet, so it's really, really nice. So a lot there at Das Bunte Schaaf. More, more German uh, indie dyers sold it. You really are loving me, Laia. And Binks. Oh, oh, oh. Then I got this sock yarn for my mom. Just a beautiful pink, red, purplish, speckled sock yarn. Because my mom loves uh, knitting socks so much. 
and I fell in love with a beautiful bed of fiber with all kinds of stuff. Isn't that amazing? It also has sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it has. It's 90% BFL Merino Falkland Jacob and 10% Shishi, which is uh, Bamboo Angelina and Silk Noyes. So, and I will wrap it up again in paper, even though it crinkles, it's good stuff. So that's what I got at Das Bunte Schaaf. I also made some clips, which I will hopefully be able to edit and add here. And then there's one thing I wanted to show you, because when yarn people look for something, they always find stuff they didn't know they had. I found back this set of DPNs, Wooden Knit Pro. Um, Trends is the name, I think it was. Let me get the Dreams, sorry. Dreams, Knit Pro Dreams. They are the Wooden Symphony. Uh, Symphony Wood double pointed 20 centimeter sock needle set. They are the sizes two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. It has only been opened like this to look at it. And then I put it away because I am a magic loop and circular uh, needles uh, person. If anyone wants to buy this for me, it is 60 euros including shipping. Uh, let me know. Send me a message. I already posted it on Instagram, but someone thought they might want it, but with the sizes they were wrong. So this is your chance to get it still. And yeah, I'm really not using DPNs. I hate DPNs. Oh, big sir. Also, I'm not a wood person. I break everything that's not metal. And even then, I think I can still manage to break it. So with that, I'm uh, leaving and saying goodbye and hoping to see you again next week. I hope I have time, otherwise I'll be on my two-week schedule again, probably. I have quite some things to show you. I'm not sure if I have knitting time. I hope so. I want to finish that first clue because that first clue from the West Knits uh, Knit Along is humongous and I'm not the only one who's behind. So, yeah, I hope for some knitting time. Bye-bye.